All right, this is a sort of introduction and uh, it's a strange way of doing things because uh, what follows this is actually already on video. But uh, I shot a load of video concerning the wish to make a clone of my four-way tool post. And uh, anybody who's seen my other videos will probably have seen it in use on the machine. In fact, I'll put it out of the way just for now. So the object of the exercise was to make a, a near clone. To that end I looked through to see what material I had and the closest that I had to be of any use was this metric which is 75 by 25 and uh, with some difficulty I used a cutting disc using a hand grinder <laughs> just to give me a start and that gave me two pieces which I machined each end so I finished up with a nice square and with two of those the object of the exercise <coughs> was to make a sandwich so that with one on top of another this is still in the vertical slide since I was working on it the thing was to have one piece on top of another and one piece was going to be machined out here in by half inch all the way around that's about three eighths and a half and this piece again half inch coming in but the depth on this one was about um, what was that? I can't remember now. I was finishing up with about five eighths. Anyway, now you'll see because I've got no milling machine as such, I have to use the vertical slide as best I can and put a cutter in the uh, three jaw or the uh, spindle, depending what cutter. Well, I tried three cutters. I tried the shell end mill, I tried another large end mill, and a three, uh, no, another three quarter, a half inch. I tried at the end. I tried this half inch, which is nice. It's quite a fresh cut. But the problem is just the sheer amount of time it takes to get rid of material. Now this, well, this is as it came off the machine. It's still got burrs on the edge. Uh, quite a nice finish, but <laughs> a very long way to go because. If you can see the scribe line there, that cut that shows at the moment is barely a third, and uh, that took forever. And then I got to thinking, I've always wanted to get a quick release tool post, quick change, I should say, and uh, I was reminded of that watching Keith Fenner's channel. So I looked around and on eBay I found, let me just see, I made a note. I got it from, uh, I forget where it came from now. It came extremely quick. And with shipping, flat rate shipping, it was about, what was it, 100 and, about 130 I suppose. And, uh, it was basically ready to go except for the T-nut which is way too large it's got to be ma uh, machined to suit the lathe in question so what we're going to do now is just run through that as a matter of interest most people have seen these uh, AXA type uh, quick change tool posts but I was quite pleased with it pretty good value and I shall look forward to using it this might get finished one day if I can find a friend with a decent milling machine, I might get this still d done. Because if all the reliefs, relief sections are made, and then one piece goes on top of the other, I finish up with a 5 8 slot for the uh, tool pieces. And then also we would put in eight, eight of these for locking the uh, tools. 
and it would be bored down the middle and make a T-nut and a top boss and a handle quite a bit of work but getting rid of this material is what really mattered and uh, it ain't going to happen anytime soon so let's move on to the quick rundown on the uh, quick change tool post and a little bit of work we had to do on the T-nut we use this very old angle grinder uh, it's about a one and a half horse motor so it's got quite a bit of good power but unfortunately it would be nicer to have a cutoff proper cutoff machine so anyway we use that and uh, let's just show the uh, basic setup and it is basic so the piece of bar is held in this real old vice here and uh, by setting this up to the side and kneeling on the top and then using the cutter gradually work through this is uh, I'm sure I mentioned it earlier this is nominally 3 by one in fact it's metric so it's 75 by 25 it's as close as I can get which would be adequate and then we'll look at the two pieces so what we'll do is we'll put these in the fore jaw get them roughly centered and then we'll turn these and just machine off this face I'm on an inch dial gauge now thousandths see so yeah, that's pretty good and we'll just zoom back a little bit That's about the last cut that uh, gets rid of most of that uh, spare material. We've got a pretty uh, aggressive auto feed, but the end result is okay. So, what we're going to do here, we're going to stick to the same. Uh, we've got a three quarter inch standoff from the, from the bottom. We're going to keep that, but what we'll do here this is just over three quarter at the moment so if I come down to uh, five eighths then that small difference there will more or less compensate I'll win that back and that will more or less compensate for this difference here uh, oh, this might work these are the uh, two blocks we're going to use. We've machined each end. Now you may see there's a scribe line here and there's a scribe line there. That, when these are sandwiched, eventually will give me the 5 8 relief for tool height. So we've got a scribe line half inch all the way around. So we've got to remove all this material all the way around. Uh, anyway what we've got here is uh, my vertical slide which I did use when I tried to cut a small V a while back which was a bit of a jokey effort. You may or may not see the dial gauge. Yes I think you can. If I work across we're pretty much there Okay, near the end of the uh, second cut, it's only 15 foul, so we're going to have to try a heavier cut and uh, I can't increase the feed rate anymore, I'm on max. We'll look at the end result in a moment. Well, not the prettiest of finish. Uh, it's pretty smooth. But I think because this cutter has got one or two teeth with a little bit of damage, I'm getting a slight score line in the middle. 
Well, I just started a cut with another end mill. This is a big old uh, two inch, I think. And it's quite old, probably not very good for sharpness. And I don't think the uh, cutters are perfectly aligned. There's a slight knock to it. Well, another experiment here. I put in a half inch milling cutter. Well, a final look after another pass. The uh, cutter's giving a nice finish, that's for sure. And there's still an awful lot to go. Because if it's visible, it may not be, at the end of my pointer, yes, you can see the scribe line. I mean, holy moly, we're not very far down yet and uh, say so this is taking way too long so more thought needed see what else we can manage all right the Aloris 100 axa quick change tool post I've just acquired uh, they give you a pretty big I guess I call it a T-nut <laughs> eventually to suit my T-slot let me just come across a little bit here there's the four-way tool post T-slots uh, just under an inch on the base and uh, I think about five eighths across the uh, narrow section. Anyway, this T nut, it's metric size, it's a bit under two inch. So we've actually got to remove from each side, we've got to get rid of about 420 thou. And I thought it's going to be a heck of a lot to machine off. So what we're doing is doing things the hard way, seeing as I have no power I have no power cutting tools for uh, anything heavy like this, so we're getting down gradually and getting through this. Whew. It's a hot day today and that's tiring. <laughs> anyway, that's the way we're getting rid of the initial stock. That's probably getting rid of just about three eighths, so it won't leave me too much to machine off. Then I'll have to turn around and do the other side. That's a long job for an old man. Anyway, there's the uh, cut off piece. Not too bad. Just a very slow job. So now we're going to machine the uh, surface there, just using a basic technique. Okay, we're getting close to the final cut on this, uh, what will be the T-nut. Yeah, it's getting close. I've got about another five thou and then we've got to do the other side which means another hacksaw job. Haha, <laughs> lovely. Right, we've got the uh, two sides of this T-nut machined off after the hacksaw craziness. I just got to the stage of trying to turn down to finish up with the uh, final thickness here we've got about another 
about 20 thou to go. The uh, center is very, very skinny. It's uh, 14 millimeter center thread. And uh, I've left just enough around there to hopefully fit. I've got to check that measurement again. All we're doing is just facing off here to get down to the thickness. So we'll just run it uh, a little bit for the last stage. What I tend to do to get a reasonable shoulder on here is to come in first and touch off and come back a little and again come back a little until I've got my uh, depth increment and I come back out to here to run power feed in so I can shut off power feed just before we get to the middle. We're finishing off the uh, T-nut, in quotes. We've machined the uh, two sides to get the width down to just under an inch. And we've got to reduce the thickness here. We're getting down towards a, pretty much a last cut. It's rough at the moment because I did a very coarse cut. And we've got a center section here which is not really that important but it is slightly just enclosing the threaded portion of this 14 mil stud and we've got a few thou to go I tend to relieve the center here to get a shoulder and then come back a little and then come in here on auto feed so I can stop just before the uh, center Uh, oops, I got the camera absolutely perched on here. I gotta check and see what uh, how the dimensions are working out. See if we're getting anywhere near. There we are. Three three oh five. We'll call that the final cut. Anything between 300 and 310 is about adequate. So in theory, if we check the, uh, if we check that center section again, and make sure that's small enough. It should be, uh, it's not very critical. We can use the vernier on it, I think. If we can get everything out of the way. It's a bit cramped on here. Let's see what we've got. Six six one six. Let's check six one six. As long as it's less than six two five, we should be good to go. So we've got clearance on it. Let's check again. Six, uh, six, sixteen again. Yeah. So just going to come, just going to come in here 
and take this merest got to work around the back here so what I'm going to do is to come in another couple of thou it's four thou total Six one oh, that's good. Now the only other thing is just to just to get rid of that sharp edge, which we can do. You won't see much here because I'm just turning that round. I'm going to release that there at the back. Just give this a kiss. Don't think there'll be much showing. Oh yeah, I can see a little bit because I've got a high angle. And I'm going to give that a touch. Just bring that round a bit more. Uh, just a little bit of draw filing here on these uh, fresh machined edges. Not quite as big a chamfer as the original piece had, but. basically enough to finish it up and avoid sharp edges. This is a very very fine cut file and uh, draw filing produces a pretty good finish. That's uh, probably adequate. Just do the other corners, edges. Right, well we've got this uh, cleaned up a bit. Got the edges uh, chamfered off. Got the draw bar in there. There we are. Now we can put the uh, tool post on there. There we are, that's uh, basically ready to go. We'll look at the various bits in a minute, although lots of people have probably seen the tool holders, but uh, we'll do that just to finish off. Well, there's everything covered in grease still. At least I've got a fair bit of grease to wipe off. So the <clears throat> there's the tool post itself with the modified Tina, that's worked out all right. Necessary work to do, and the rest of it, which I say a lot of people are probably familiar with, uh, parting tool holder, uh, knurling, which I wouldn't use because I've got the straddler, which I referred to uh, in a previous video. Uh, this, you know, I forget that offhand. I cannot remember what that is, old age. Uh, boring bar holder, pretty straightforward. And then these two, actually they're marked as 101 and 102. I can't actually see very much difference. One seems the same as the other, which is good because that gives uh, option for a couple of regularly used tools. There's a fly around here, it's going to get slaughtered before long. So there we are. This is the uh, conclusion of the quest for another tool post. In fact, in this case, a better tool post. And there's the fly again. I think he's going to get a squirt. 
<laughs> it's one of those pesky flies, the ones that try and land on your nose. Anyway, there we are. That's uh, really all that was involved was making the uh, tea nut, and we're good to go. Better than the, despite expense, uh, better than all the work that would have been involved to make my uh, four-way tool post clone. I may yet do it, but uh, it's not going to be on the urgent list. Two pieces of offcut from the original tea nut. Uh, hand hacksaw job. They're keeping them as souvenirs, and they ought to be rusting from sweat if they weren't covered in oil. Incidentally, I forgot to mention earlier as well, I could have made up a completely new tea nut from some other stock, but uh, the uh, studding or draw rod is 18mm by 1.5 and uh, it's just not a tap size that I have, so that's why I decided to machine the one that came with the uh, tool post. <laughs> 